بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الزكاة ليس لها علاقة بهذا الذي يعني تجب في حق الزكاة يتيم مجنون غني فقير ليس لنا علاقة به عنده مال بلغ نصاب لابد فيه الزكاة سواء كان مجنون أو يتيم أو فقير سأعطيك مثال أنا نعم When it comes to the obligation of zakah, its obligation is not connected to the person, meaning whether the person is an orphan or a child, or whether the person is poor, the obligation of zakah is not connected to the person. And I'll give you examples to clarify the statement. After a long life upon obedience to Allah, Sheikh Ibrahim died. And he left a child. And this child is only five years old. And now this child or this son of his, he is an orphan. Why? Because the father passed away and he was only five years old. The child was five years old. And how much inheritance was given to this child from the inheritance or the wealth of Sheikh Ibrahim Rahimahullah 70 million 70 million pounds بعد سنة so after a year قلنا ل... لأم هذا الولد قلنا اعطينا زكاة المال لها... مال عنده 70 مليون مر عليها سنة كاملة so after a year has passed by we said to the mother of the child that give us the zakah which is due on the money he owns, meaning 70 million pounds. And she replies, no, but this is an orphan. And so we reply to the mother that zakah is not connected to the individual, rather it is connected to the wealth. So we don't look at the state or we don't consider the state of the individual, whether the person is poor or rich or old or young or mentally sane or mentally disabled, it does not matter. We only look at whether the person possesses the minimum threshold and whether a year has passed by after which he has possessed the minimum threshold. A form a second example we said regarding this brother that he is poor and he only possesses a thousand pounds on the day of Eid al-Fitr i.e. the last day of Ramadan how much do you possess? he says I possess a thousand pounds يفضل عن قوتي وقوت عيالي ها أكثر يستطيع يخرج زكاة الفطر صاع من طعم مفهوم تجب عليه الزكاة قال لكن أنا علي دين عشرين ألف مثلا نقول ليس لنا علاقة عليك ديون ما عليك نحن لا نسأل عن الدين فعندما تأتي للشيخ إبراهيم وتقول عليك زكاة كذا ما نسأله كم عليك دين ما لنا علاقة الدين هذا ليس له علاقة نحن علاقتنا ببلوغ النصاب وحولنا الحول مفهوم ولا ما كان أحد أخرج زكاة يا رجل نعم so this poor person we say to him that at the end of Ramadan because he gives his zakah on the first of Ramadan now it's the last day of Ramadan and we say to him how much money do you have and he says I have one thousand pounds we so we say to him that this thousand pounds this is surplus to the requirements of you and your family and therefore zakah has to be given and even if he says but I only have 1000 pounds after the passing of the whole year which remains but this 1000 pounds that he possesses this is the surplus of what was required for him and his family and therefore he has to give the zakah and if he said but I have debts upon me I have a surplus of 1000 pounds but I have 20,000 pounds of debt or Sheikh Ibrahim says that I have millions in debt. The fact that this person owes a loan, this has no connection 
whatsoever to zakah. Because if we were to consider the loans of the people, then nobody would be giving zakah. نعم بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله كتاب الحج. And then after this we come to كتاب الحج. صيام صيام. Then after this we come to كتاب الصيام the book of fasting. الصيام ما هو؟ So what is صيام؟ الصيام هو الإمساك عن الطعام والشراب وسائر المفطرات من أذان الفجر إلى أذان المغرب لكن لا بد أن يكون بنية. أو تقول في أول التعريف هو التعبد لله بالإمساك عن الطعام والشراب وسائر المفطرات من طلوع الفجر الصادق إلى غروب الشمس أذان المغرب. نعم. So what is the definition of الصيام? الصيام it is to worship Allah سبحانه وتعالى through abstaining from food and drink and the other matters which invalidate a person's fast. And this is from true dawn to sunset. So a person has to abstain from food and drink and the other matters which break a person's fast, but with the intention, i.e. the intention of worshipping Allah. الصيام يقوم على ركنين أركان الصيام اثنين. نعم. الأول الإمساك والثاني النية. نعم. And therefore, fasting it is built upon two pillars. There are two pillars. For the validity of a fast, firstly, abstaining from those matters which break the fast, and the second pillar, the niyyah, the intention. نعم. هذا قال أمس طيلة النهار أنا لم أكل ولم أشرب ولا ما أتي بمفطر لكن ما نويت صيام باطل. So if this person says that yesterday for the full day I did not eat, nor did I drink. Nor did I do anything which would break a fast, but I did not make the intention. We say to him, your fast is unaccepted. وهذا قال أنا نويت لكن أكلت وشربت نعم وأنا ذاك ليس ناس. And if another person says, I did make the intention, the niyyah for fasting, but I was eating and drinking intentionally. نعم على من يجب الصيام. So there's no fasting for this person. After this, upon whom is fasting an obligation? يعني صيام رمضان meaning the fasting of Ramadan على كل مسلم fasting of Ramadan is an obligation upon every single Muslim بالغ who is over the age of puberty أرجع هذا غير البالغ الصغير لكن الصغير نعود على الصيام ونشجع على الصيام وتعطوه هدية حتى يصوم and therefore the young person who is under the age of puberty is excluded from the obligation of fasting however in order to cultivate the person to fast when he or she reaches the age of puberty, whilst they are young, we train them upon fasting in stages and we give them gifts and prizes for fasting. عاقل. Also, the person has to be sane. مستوطن يعني غير مسافر مع أن المسافر الأولى به الصيام. نعم. And the next condition for the obligation of a fast upon a person is that he has to be resident. So the one who is traveling is permitted to fast. However, it is obligated upon a person who is resident. نعم الصيام أولى لأنه ممكن يؤخر يؤخر ولا يصوم. نعم إلا إذا يشق عليه. Even a person who is traveling, it's better for him to fast. Because perhaps he will delay the fast and delay making it up and de delay making the qada, and then he has no opportunity. So it's better for him to fast even if he's traveling, unless the fasting is going to harm him or is difficult for him. قادر على الصيام خرج به العاجز عاجز إما لكبر سن أو مرض ليس أي مرض مرض إذا صام قد يضر به مفهوم نعم. And also, the person has to have the ability to fast. And therefore, an old person who is too weak to fast, or an ill person, and not any type of illness, rather that illness, that if the ill person was to fast, then the fasting would hurt or harm him. This ill person does not need to fast. And then an additional condition for the women and that is that she has to be pure from the bleeding of the menses or postnatal bleeding. نعم. طيب ما هي المفطرات؟ 
And then after this, what are those matters which invalidate or break a person's fast? Now, الطعام والشراب، الأكل والشرب، وما يقوم مقام الطعام والشراب مثل الإبر المغذية هذه سيروم بالإنجليزية إيش؟ هذا اللي إيش اسمه بالإنجليزية؟ هو IV drips. تمام. Uh, so what are, the, uh, are those things which invalidate a person's fast? Firstly, food and drink, and then anything which is similar in meaning or benefit to food and drink, like any type of medicine which gives nutrition to the body, like for example the IV drips. No, but if you take the blood of the blood, like the Furtarin, this is not the right thing. بنج الإبرة للأسنان هذه غير مفطرة نعم but if a person was to take an injection to reduce the pain for example then this does not break a person's fast or if a person was to take an injection to lessen the pain of the mouth or, or teeth this does not uh, break a person's fast نعم وما يجري مجرى الطعام والشراب أخذ قطعة بلاستيك وبت... ما هي طعام لكن ابتلعها هذا يجري مجرى الطعام والشراب هذا من المفطرات مفهوم؟ نعم and also anything which enters the body like food or drink would enter the body so for example if a person took a piece of plastic even though that plastic is not food or drink but he swallows it then this breaks a person's fast why? because it is entering the body like food and drink would enter the body طيب قطرة العين uh, eye drops وضع قطرة العين وجد يعني مرارة هنا في حلقه yeah. مفطرات أولى. If a person uses eye drops and then after using the eye drops he can feel its bitterness in his throat. Does it break the fast or not? نعم من المفطرات أولى. Does it break the fast or not? قطرة عين. نعم وجد إنسان عاقل يشرب من عينه ما يوجد. إذا ما من المفطرات ليس مدخل معتاد للطعام والشعر حتى لو وجد مرارة ليست من المفطرات هذا يقول الشيخ بن عثيمين رحمه الله نعم. so, الشيخ ابن عثيمين رحمه الله his view is that if he takes eye drops and even if he can taste the taste of the bitterness of the drops in his throat this does not break a person's fast why? because this isn't how people eat and drink nobody drinks through their eyes so this isn't the normal passageway for food and drink. نعم قطرة العين قطرة الأذن هذه ليست من المفطرات. So eye drops and ear drops do not break a person's fast. نعم لكن قال عليه الصلاة والسلام وبالغ في الاستنشاق في الوضوء إلا أن تكون صائم يعني الصائم ما يغوص يعني في البحر يغوص. نعم. However, when it comes to inhaling something or not inhaling something. Uh, food, uh, any type of liquid which is inhaled through the nose the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said that be excessive when it comes to rinsing your nose unless you are fasting and for this reason a person who is fasting should not be swimming or diving into the sea no, swimming ma fi mushkila lakin ta'at diving diving amma swimming ma andu mushkila naam له للصائم له أن يتبرد يسبح يقتسل ما في إشكال نعم الإشكال في الغوص. so نعم. a a a fasting person can take a shower and can swim but the problem is diving into the water and being immersed in the water. تمام <coughs> هذا الأول من المفطرات الطعام والشراب نعم so the first type of of matter which invalidates a fast is food or drink or anything which takes the meaning of food or drink. نعم. الثاني. نعم. الثاني ما هو؟ The second matter which invalidates the fast. النوم. هل النوم من المفطرات؟ does والله بعض الناس يظن انه ما ينام وهو صائم يصح ينام لكن لا ينام كل اليوم نعم does تمام. sleeping invalidate a person's fast no 
Some people, they think that sleeping invalidates a person's fast, and it does not invalidate a person's fast. But it's not permitted for that person to be sleeping throughout the day, yani all day. تعمد القيء تعمد حتى يستقي هذا من المفطرات. But self-inducing vomit, this invalidates a fast. الحجامة ومثله التبرع بالدم. And also blood cupping, and similar to is is donating blood. This you you فطر. نعم التبرع بالدم من المفطرات. نعم. So donating blood and blood cupping. This also invalidates a person's fast. But if a small amount of blood is taken for blood analysis, this does not invalidate a person's fast. If a person has a wet dream, and there is a discharge of semen, this does not invalidate a person's fast. But if a person was awake and he intended this, and he intended the discharge of semen through his actions or the actions of another person, this breaks a person's fast. And also intercourse. And then when it comes to the women, there is an additional and that is the discharge of the blood of menses or postnatal bleeding. <laughs> and then there are two types of fasting, and that is the obligatory fasting and the fasting which is nafal. As for the obligatory type of fasting, the fasting of Ramadan, or the fasting which is obligated in the form of a kafara, an expiation, like we mentioned, the expiation of al yamin that a person fasts three days consecutively if he is not able to fulfill the other matters. Mm -hmm. And then the third form of obligatory fasting is when a person obligates a fast upon himself through a vow. He said, that I obligate upon myself by the name of Allah that I have to fast. Now it is an obligation upon him to fast. And what is permitted for the fasting person? To swallow. To swallow saliva. So some people they think that, that a person is not allowed to swallow saliva. But this is permitted. Why? Because he hasn't eaten something or put anything into his body. And also taking a shower. So, so a person cooling himself by using the AC or for example taking a shower. ذوق الطعام للحاجة فقط يعني مرأة تعرف هذا عند الإفطار إذا كان الطعام الملح زائد أو ناقص ممكن يطلقها فهي تذوق الطعام حتى لا تصنع مشكل لأن يعني بعض الناس يصوم سبحان الله خلاص يعني ما يكلم أحد في نهار رمضان نعم مع أن الصيام تهذيب للنفس نعم أو الذوق بجعلها للنسان كذا شوفها هذا الذوق بس <laughs> and also it is permitted for a fasting person to taste a small amount or a tiny amount of food if there is a need to do so. Like for example. <laughs> so tasting a tiny amount of food by placing it upon the tongue if there is a need to do so. Like for example a woman who is cooking at home no. and she needs to check the salt and the spices. If it, were, if it was too much maybe the man would divorce her. And therefore a small tiny amount of food she can place it upon her tongue if there is a need to do so to taste it. But as for taking spoons or tasting various types of food then this invalidates the fast. No. يستحب للصائم 
نعم. And also it is recommended for a fasting person تعجيل الفطر في أول الوقت to hasten to break the fast in the beginning of its time. تأخير السحور إلى تقريبا قبل ربع ساعة من الأذان فجر. And to delay the suhoor in the morning until roughly 15 minutes before the adhan of al-fajr. يتسحر على تمر الأفضل سنة. يفطر ليه سحر؟ يتسحر. And that a person he takes for suhoor dates. والأفضل أن يفطر على رطب. And it is better for a person to break his fast with fresh dates. ما هو الرطب؟ And what is a rutub? الآن عندنا ال الذي يخرج من النخلة يمر بثلاثة مراحل. مرحلة قبل النضج يعني لا يؤكل. ومرحلة يكون مثل التفاح فاكهة. هذا لا يمكن تخزينه. مثل التفاح مثل الفاكهة. هذا نصف ونصف الآن لا يصلح التخزين لكن يصلح للأكل. هذه المرحلة وسط. المرحلة الأخيرة يصلح التخزين هذا التمر. نعم. لأنه بعض ما يرى الرطب هنا. So when it comes to dates, there are three stages in the growing of dates. Firstly, when a date is not ripe, neither can it be eaten nor can it be stored. And then there is a second stage when the date is ripe, it can be eaten fresh like a fruit, however it cannot be stored dry. And then the third stage is when it it is ripened and it can be stored dry. نعم. السنة أن يفطر على رطب. So the sunnah is for a person to break his fast with fresh ripe dates. فإن لم يجد فعلى تمر. And if he is not able to do so when the dried with dried dates. فإن لم يجد فعلى ماء. And if he cannot find dates to break his fast then with water. يعني أول شيء يبدأ به الماء. Meaning the first thing that a person breaks the fast with is water. فإن لم يجد فعلى ما وجد مثل برتقال مثلا أو لحم نعم. And if he has no dates, no fresh dates, no water, then whatever food he can find, like for example oranges or any other fruit or food. ما وجد شيء فقير ليس عنده شيء. And if he possesses nothing in terms of food or drink, ينوي. Then he makes an intention. With his heart to break the fast. نعم. يستحب للصائم الاعتمار في رمضان. And it is encouraged for the fasting person to perform umrah in Ramadan. قراءة القرآن. And also to occupy his time with the recitation of Quran. الدعاء. And supplicating. صلاة التراويح. And also to pray صلاة التراويح. الاعتكاف في العشر الأواخر من رمضان حتى يدرك ليلة القدر. And for a person. To perform i'tikaf, meaning to devote himself and isolate himself in the masjid with the worship of Allah, so he can coincide with Laylatul Qadr. Taharri Laylatul Qadr. And this is in the last ten nights of Ramadan, and also to see, seek out Laylatul Qadr by an abundance of worship. Yahrum ala saim. And then there are certain matters which are forbidden for the fasting person. Fi'l kul muharram wa qawl kul muharram. And that is every haram statement and action. نعم طيب ويحرم عليه يقول بلع النخام يعني يعني البلغم ما يبلع لكن لو ابتلع لم يفطر لكن حرام عليه نعم and also some of the علماء mention that it is forbidden for a fasting person to be swallowing flame if he swallows it it does not break his fast but before swallowing it it is forbidden for him to do so نعم طيب بعد هذا سنذكر ال ها والجماعة في نهار رمضان لكن في ليلة كان عندي واحد يسألني يقول هل أكرمكم الله الدخول للحمام من مفطرات قلت لا ما ليس مفطرات نعم فقط اللي ذكرنا هذا الجماع وكذا لكن في ليل رمضان يأكل يشرب now, there was a person who asked me a question and he said, if I enter the bathroom, is my fast broken? And the answer is, why would it be broken? So the only thing which invalidates a person's fast is that we have mentioned 
eating and drinking and intercourse and the, those other matters in the day of Ramadan. Why surpasses? Why, why surpasses fasting? As for the night of Ramadan, it's allowed for a person to eat and drink and have relations with his wife and so on. أفضل شيء في رمضان أن تبقى في المسجد تحافظ على صيامك بالبقاء في المسجد. And the best method of preserving your fast is for a person to remain in the masjid whilst he is fasting and this way you are protecting your fast نعم. وبالنسبة لكم دائما خليك في المسجد and as for you people في رمضان في غير رمضان it's better to remain in the masjid inside and outside of Ramadan والله تشعر بقيمة المسجد في هذه الدول أكثر من بلاد المسلمين لماذا؟ لأن عندما تدخل ها تشعر بماذا؟ إيمان by Allah, you appreciate the value of the masjid, especially in countries like this. In fact, more so than even the Muslim countries. Because here, when you enter into the masjid, you feel iman. And then when it comes to the fasting, which is encouraged and recommended, but not an obligation. Then the fasting of every Monday and Thursday. والاثنين آكد and fasting Monday is more emphasized than Thursday صيام ثلاثة أيام من كل شهر هجري and fasting any three days of a هجري month صيام الأيام البيض الثالث عشر والرابع عشر والخامس عشر من كل شهر هجري and also fasting the days of the full moon and they are the 13th, 14th and 15th of every Islamic Hijri month. And also the fasting of Dawood and that is that he would fast a day and he would not fast the next day. And also fasting the majority of Muharram and, and the majority of Sha'ban and also fasting six days of Shawwal. And also it is encouraged, highly recommended to fast the day of Arafah. And also the first ten days of Dhul Hijjah, of course not the day of Eid. And then there are certain days in which a person is forbidden from fasting. There are certain days in which a person is forbidden from fasting, like the days of Eid. And also the days of Tashriq, and they are the 11th, 12th, and 13th of Dhul Hijjah. It is forbidden for a person to fast, except for the one who is intending Hajj and he could not find an animal to slaughter. ويحرم صيام يوم الشك يعني يتقدم رمضان بيوم أو يومين احتياطا يعني نعم. And also it is not permitted for a person to fast a day of doubt, meaning he's unsure whether Ramadan has entered or has not entered. So just to be on the safe side, he fasts one or two days before Ramadan. This is not permitted. ويحرم صيام الدهر يصوم ولا يفطر. And also it is forbidden for a person to fast every single day without days of not fasting. And also it is not allowed for a person to single out and specify Friday with fasting. Unless... A person fasts on Friday, but not because he's specifying Friday, but due to another day coinciding with Friday. For example, this year, uh, Yom Al-Ashura, it coincided with Friday. And therefore, a person can fast on that Friday. Why? Because not because he's intending the Friday, but because Yom Ashura, it coincided with the Friday, even though that which is better and complete is to fast Yom Ashura along with the day before it, either 9th, or Yom Ashura along with the day after it, either 11th. يحرم الوصال يعني لا يفطر عند المغرب يواصل الصيام يواصل الليل بالنهار نعم. And also it is forbidden for a person to continue fasting after the day, time of Ramadan. He passes by Maghrib 
and carries on continues fasting the night of the day this is also forbidden wallahu a'lam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam jazakumullahu khairan